Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about open source threat hunting with Zeek. So we'll start with what Zeek is, then we'll talk about how to install Zeek and get your environment set up with it, and then we'll talk about the logs that Zeek produces and some of the basic things that you can do with it today. In today's talk, we'll focus on a lot of the basic analytics and we'll save probably future talks for talking about some of the more advanced topics of what you can do with it. So starting out with what Zeek is. Um, so Zeek is an open source network traffic analyzer. You can give it PCAP, you can put it live on the wire, and what it's going to do is it's going to generate a number of logs for what it sees out there. Many operators use it either for network security monitoring or for things like threat hunting and incident response. So it's a really valuable tool set for really a wide variety of security operations areas. Um, the other important thing with it to note is it's designed for commodity hardware. So where other projects, other network analyzers might require very specific um, hardware to be optimized, Zeek's designed to run on commodity hardware. And it's designed to actually be scalable and clusterable. So that's where you can get 100 gigs per second um, performance or higher um, with Zeek. So it, it's clusterable, it's scalable, it's designed for commodity hardware, and the original name of Zeek, um, it was changed a few years ago, was Bro, and the Bro project actually bates, dates back to Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in 95. So it's been around a little bit, um, and it's a really powerful tool. So that's a quick background on what it is. Let's talk about how we can get started with it. Um, so when you go to install, if you're installing on Mac, the great thing is it's part of Homebrew. Um, so you do need to do that Xcode select install if you haven't. Some of the dependencies there to get Zeek fully set up, um, you need to run that command. And then you should just be able to install it through Homebrew. Um, it's simple as that. So two commands to get it on there. On Ubuntu or other Linux distros, you have different options. So you can add the repository, which we'll talk about in the next slide, or they actually have pre-built packages. If you go to this full build documentation page at the bottom, that's where you can get packages and you can also get the instructions to add other repositories, either for other versions of Ubuntu, we're going to show Ubuntu, or for other versions of Linux. So this is really nice. Now there's a lot more options. Kind of a few years ago, you had to build it yourself. Um, and now it's actually a lot easier to get started with Seek. So, Getting it installed on Ubuntu now, like I was saying, you used to have to build it. Now it's really just four steps. So it's getting the key, or it's adding the uh, source to where um, to the app repo source. It's getting the key so it has that right, or so it can actually connect out there. Running the update, then running install. This is going to add most of the dependencies you need if you're installing from the app repo. If you're building from source, um, the documentation page down there or on the Zeek uh, li library has the additional dependencies you need to get. But if you're installing from the package repo, this is all you have to do. So jumping into actually using it. So we talked about installing it. Let's now talk about actually using it. So like I said, Zeek works on PCAP or live network traffic. Now, one of the kind of challenges with it, um, and that, you know, in doing the research for this, I found this actually was something that still requires a script, is if you want to run on multiple PCAP files, you're going to either need a script that's calling the command through everything in the folder, or you can just do a merge cap. And so if you want to do a merge cap, um, if you need to combine all your PCAPs into one to run it through, um, again, with merge cap, all you have to do is merge cap tech w, give it the new pcap name you're going to write out to, and then give it all of the pcaps you want to join or wildcard. You can do this across the directory. Um, I think you probably can also do this recursively. Um, and what that's going to do is generate one big pcap. And then to get to actually using Zeek to actually generate the logs, it's really just a matter of calling Zeek dash r and giving it that pcap that you want to analyze. Um, there are other commands if you want to do it on the Ethernet interface itself. Um, we're not going to talk about that today, but reading from a pcap and running Zeek is as simple as running Zeek-R and running it against that pcap to analyze. What you're going to have when you run it is in the folder that you ran Zeek from, in the current working directory, you're going to have these logs generated. And we'll talk about a few of these logs, but 
we took a PCAP called 4SICS PCAP, which this uh, security conference, an industrial security conference out in Stockholm, we took two days of their network security lab, merged it together, ran that Z command to generate the logs. And now what we have are the logs that you see in this directory. So really quick looking at the directory, um, the con log, this is going to be your network information. You have DHCP information, DNS, we see some industrial protocols, so DNP3 and Modbus, um, NTP, Kerberos. These, the, these are all of the kind of basic logs that you can get straight out of the box. Now, there are other, are other logs available through Zeek. Um, if you mess with the policy file, if you mess with kind of the rules, the configuration it uses to run, you actually can get other types of log files. The, the log files you see here are the ones that pop out by default. So. Um, there's a really good cheat sheet put out by Corelight um, with, that has all of the different fields in the Zeek log. So definitely recommend checking this out and using this as a reference guide. I honestly still use this as a reference guide. Um, what you can see is the con log in the fields that it drops out. But this PDF at this page that you can get um, has a lot of the fields for the basic logs and what they mean. So it's a great reference sheet as you're going through. But we're going to talk about a few of the logs that were generated out from what we ran. Um, so yeah, so let's hop right into it. So the con log, if you're kind of looking for NetFlow data, if you're looking for, hey, what's, what's kind of the metadata of who talked to who, either with TCP, UDP, or anything, if you need that five tuple of you know, source IP, source port, destination IP, desk port, and protocol, you can pull that out of the con log. Now the con log, obviously, with that, if you have a really big PCAP, this can grow significantly. And if you have a really big PCAP with a lot of small connections, you're going to see your con log quickly grow in size. But you can see in the con log, what we have are those fields. So id.org-8, that's our origin host. You have your origin port after that, your response host, your response port. And so depending on the analytics you're doing, this log can be super helpful for auditing connection flows between different devices. Another note to, or another field to note in here is you actually have your UID field. This is the Zeek ID. This is a really important field to be aware of because when you're combining data rows from different log files, this UID field is actually going to be consistent throughout log files for the connection. And so if we wanted to see more on that top connection, on that DNS um, to 8.8.8.8, we could actually go over to the DNS logs with that UID, and we should be able to see the um, DNS record associated with that UID. So UID fields, super important to track and super important to help you correlate between different logs on what's going on. Hopping on, brief overview. HTTP log, we get useful um, connection metadata in here. And so depending on what gets put out of the Zeek module, and you can even update the Zeek traffic analyzers um, to pull more data into the logs, but depending on what the module or what the uh, protocol analyzer pulls out, um, that's going to kind of determine what gets put in the log. And so with HTTP, we do have things like user agents, URIs, the HTTP option that was, or um, the method that was used in HTTP. And so again, if you're looking, if you're doing a hunt through HTTP traffic, Zeek's HTTP log is a great place to start. Um, down at the bottom, you see we have that nice ports, trinity.txt.back. This is an in-map of, um, of uh, in-map. And so again, um, and we talked to actually about this in-map artifact, I think a video or two before this when we talked about scanning. But again, you can take a very basic log like this pulled out of the PCAP and you can do very interesting things with it in a threat hunt or IR case to really help you understand what's going on um, or understand your environment better. So it doesn't just have to be chasing a APT, chasing malware. Um, it can also help you really understand your environment a bit better. So that's HTTP. DPD.log. Now this is an interesting one. DPD stands for Dynamic Port Detection. And so another thing that Zeek does is it uses its protocol analyzer to say like, hey, what, what do I think this protocol is running on this port? And so if you look at that proto, it's the uh, fourth column from the right. If you look at that proto field, the top one's 23, 514, 23, 4,000. 
And then if you look from the second from the right, Zeke has actually identified here um, in the DPD log, in the dynamic port detection log, that HTTP is actually the protocol that's running um, on these ports potentially. Now, there obviously is a chance that this is a false positive, but where this is interesting and where this can help you is seeing where you know protocols might be running on non-standard ports in your environment. Very valuable, um, and again, if you this could be helpful with malware, right? To where if malware is using HTTP, if it's using another protocol that SQL recognized, you'll actually have an entry in the DPD log um, when that connection is made and when Zeke's like, hey, I think this is a protocol running on a port that it doesn't usually run on. FTP log, talking again on metadata. What's interesting here is you do, like I was saying, it pulls out different fields. In the FTP log, you can actually see usernames and passwords. Um, and so like when we're doing audits, right, and we're like, hey, our place is using default passwords. Um, if FTP is an environment where default passwords are used over, you'll see it in the FTP log. Um, obviously, FTP is going to be helpful with a lot of file transfer, lateral movement, a lot of other areas. But this shows an example with the FTP log of what you might see in there. DNS logs, we talked about this early on. Um, what's nice with the DNS log here is this brings together both the query and response. And so in this case, I don't actually think there were responses. So we, yeah, we see actually refused if you look at the status down there. Um, but this will actually bring together both query and response. So you as an analyst, if you just care about um, those fields and the certain kind of high level DNS fields of what was queried, what domains were queried and where was it sent to, this is a very valuable field to help or um, log to help you out with that. SSH.log, um, SSH.log again, interesting artifacts in there. You can see your client and server user agents. Um, and here we have another in-map user agent key. So again, just by looking through these logs, you can, barely, um, you can really understand what's weird in your environment or what's going on. Also looking at this, um, you might see the MOXA, so uh, MOXA 1.0, it's kind of halfway down towards the right there. Um, those are actually industrial devices. So by this too, you can see both malicious things like, hey, NMAP's in here. But you can also say, hey, I have MOXA, which are industrial switches out in the environment. This again can help with visibility um, among other analytics. So modules, like I said, Zeek is modular. Um, other mo modules or protocol analyzer exist for other protocols. In this PCAP, we had DNP3 and Modbus, which are two industrial protocols. Those do have protocol analyzers in Zeek and generate logs. So we actually did get a DNP3 log with the function codes that ran through. Same with Modbus. Um, what's nice with here too with Modbus is you actually do see the exceptions here. Um, and so you, again, you see both sides um, of both the um, query and response here. This does exist for other protocols. So the uh, kind of other cool protocol we've used, uh, the SMB one, super helpful. Um, SMB is a big protocol. It's obviously used a lot of places, but you know, depending on the protocol and use, there might be a protocol analyzer out of the box that can really help you when you're threat hunting or when you're doing an IR case. So that was a quick overview of Zeke. Uh, thanks for joining in and we hope to see you next week.